Hello, I'm Michael O'Malley. I'm the SAG Calculators Programmer or Creator. And I'd like to run through some things with you now, the, the basics of using the program. So we'll talk about form sizing and scaling, the help file, how there's context sensitive help in a help file. And then we'll go through and look at some basic features of SAG Calculator. So we'll talk about the setup button, uh, the SAG span details tab, uh, the cable SAG details tab, and then we'll look at some actual buttons and functionality as well, like the preserve button, the delete button, uh, checking SAG, um, uh, the save button, open button, the calc button, report button, and the exit button. So we'll just talk about the basics in this video. Okay, so let's uh, run SAG Calculator and then we'll make a start. And you'll notice something when you first run SAG Calculator. Um, you'll see the splash screen come up, and, uh, and then you'll see another screen come up as well for the very first time you run the program. Okay, and here they come. Okay, so there's a splash screen, and, uh, and then there's another screen that you'll see come up here. Okay, and uh, it just tells you what the, what the program does basically. It's a little intro to the program. And if you don't want to see that dialogue again, just click that and click OK, and you'll never see that message again. Okay, so a little bit on uh, on form scaling and sizing here. Uh, SAO Calculator is run to, to work on any size screen. Okay, so if you if you resize it, like uh, hold the mouse over the left corner there and, 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 and drag the window with the mouse button held down. Uh, you'll see everything inside the window resized as well. So all the buttons and data entry boxes resized as well. And similarly, if you make it so it's really big, uh, like that, so it's much bigger than I'm recording at the moment, uh, you'll see that it's uh, everything appears really big. Okay, so it'll work on any size screen you like. Okay, and you'll just put it back into the, the size I had before. Uh, and you've even got the um, uh, you've even got the maximize and minimize buttons as well. So you can maximize it so it's huge and then uh, restore it again if you want as well. So uh, if you're working on a screen that's really big or really small and you want to make use of that screen, go right ahead. Okay, so SAG Calculator is completely scalable to any size screen. Okay, um, so that's the, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, form sizing and scaling. So that's a, a great little feature there. Okay, another feature that's very useful is a help file. Okay, in fact the help file is essential. Um, I'd hate to think of people trying to use the program without the help file. It would be a, a nightmare. Okay, so inside the help file there, uh, if you click, click the help button, uh, you'll get a table of contents there with lots of other information on various parts of the, the program. Okay, um, so inside the help file, there's the program overview, and that tells you what SAG calculator does, and um, the modes of operation about sagging and, and checking. Okay, so you can, they're, they're all links. So you can click on those and talk about and read about sagging the cables, and then you can go back and go and look at checking the cables and what that means. Okay. At the end of each topic as well, there's uh, further information of useful topics you might want to to go to go to, or back to the table of contents again, or as you can just use the back button here. Okay. So there's full navigation provided in the help file. Um, there's, a, there's a getting started, a quick start guide, and that's essential reading for all SAG calculator users. Okay. So if you if you just uh, coming new to the program now, the, the, the very first thing you should do, as well as watching these videos, is um, is uh, is that is have a good read of that quick start guide, okay? And that takes you through all the operations of the program, um, how to enter settings, how to how to do sagging, how to uh, how to uh, do checking, all those sorts of things, okay? And um, so it's all all provided there for, for you, okay? Lots of screenshots and lots of description that goes along with it as well, as well as the usual. Um, hot links to uh, other tabs and other information. Okay, so you can click buttons and menus, uh, file extensions, you can just really go into the file in, in depth. Okay, if ever you get lost, you can just go back to the table of contents again. Okay, so it's a very navigatable help file. It's, it's, it's made with the, uh, with the end user in mind. Okay, um, if you need to look at SAG, SAG calculation methods, if you want to find out more about those, you can click on that SAG calculation tab there and, and there's further information provided on all of those. Okay, the pros and cons of each method, uh, the planning, the technique, um, and, and how, to, how, to, how to actually do it. Okay, um, so that's for the each, each SAG method. Um, there's also information about the SAG, um, the span tab and the SAG table, or the cable SAG tab. Okay, and what those tabs mean. Any, any, any places you need to be careful of stuff, there's caution messages in the help. Okay, uh, what the preserve button does, which I'll talk about a little bit later. 
Okay, so all, all of this information there is inside the help file. Um, if you want to find out about, about the user units of measure in the program, you can you can look at that as well. And there's metric units supported and imperial units. Okay, so all of this is inside the help file. Um, buttons and menus, if you want to read about that. Setup details, if you want to read about that. Okay, there's lots of information provided on all these topics. Um, System requirements, they're pretty low for SAG calculator, and basically anything that's any any computer that's made in the last 15 years will run SAG calculator just fine. Certainly desktop or laptop. Okay. Um, so eight megabytes of RAM, Windows 95 or later. So the system requirements are very modest. Okay. Um, and the minimums. Um, if you want to find out about the uh, the limitation of the program until it's registered, you can click on that. And basically you can't save any data or print reports. Okay. Um, if you want to find out about benefits of purchasing the program, you can click on that. Uh, if you would like to see what sort of changes in development the program has been through over the years, um, you can click on program development history and uh, then you can just scroll down and, and, and look through um, the various versions of the program. It's going right back into the early development stages of the project. If you go right down here, um, um, you'll, you'll see where I'm having early early uh, meetings with Ergon Energy about developing the program. So before we even wrote, before I even wrote a line of code, okay, I was uh, documenting my uh, developments here in the help file. Okay, there's version two, 0 0.2, and then 0 0.03. So these are long before the release of the program was made. Uh, so it's documenting all the development history of the program. So you can read about that if you want to. Uh, possible future enhancements. Um, so I'm looking at doing a, a compressed HTML version of the help file and uh, extra functions as well. Um, uh, maybe extra reports, extra reporting features, the ability to see input data on the reports as well as calculations, and so on. So all of that stuff there is in the, in the mix. Um, and. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do those depending on what sort of user response I get. So if, if you're, you're using the program and you'd really like a feature, please drop me an email, okay? And uh, then I will be more likely to, to work on that feature in the future. If I get um, 10 people or 20 people or five people even emailing me if they want a feature, then I'll probably get stuck into it straight away, okay? But if I get one person every five years emailing me about a feature they want, um, you know, I'm not going to be in that much of a hurry because not many people want it. <laughs> Okay, so it's it's all based on uh, what sort of feedback I get. Okay, um, and then right down the end there, um, you can see the credits, and uh, they're the people that were involved in the program, the, the development of the program. And G Greg Chapman was certainly one of the key figures. Uh, he's uh, the guy that actually uses the program out in the field uh, with Ergon Energy. So his his input was crucial to the development of the program. Basically, the SAG calculator as, as it exists today is a program that is exactly what Greg wanted. Okay, uh, and then about the author, you can read a bit about me. Um, I've been developing software. This is all out of date now. This is all uh, 10 years out of date, but I've been developing software for 30 years. Uh, I've been teaching uh, teaching people how to develop software for 12 years. I've worked in industry in the UK and for clients in the US and uh, all, all over Australia as well. Okay, um, and that's a help file. Okay, so uh, lots of useful informa information in there please make use of it. Okay, if you're stuck on something, if you're not sure of something, check the help file. Okay, so back to our little table of contents there. So we've talked about the help file. Now let's talk about context sensitive help. Okay, so before we get down into the nitty gritty of how to use the program, you'll see that there's this question mark in the, inside the button down here. That's a context sensitive help. Okay, if you click the help button up here, or if you go to the help button, the help file here, that'll just take you to the table of contents in the help file. Okay, just the table of contents. But if you click this little button down here with the uh, with a uh, question mark in it, then it will take you to the context sensitive help. Okay, still in the same help file, but it will take you to the focused area of the help file uh, to do with what you're looking at on the screen at the moment. So if we click that little like little uh, help button now, and we're on the SAG span details tab, it'll take us to the SAG span details section of the help file. Okay, which is what it's done. Okay, and when you get down here into the when you Later on, when you uh, when you're working with particular SAG methods, uh, we're on the sideboard method at the moment. That's the tab that's selected. If we click the little help button there, it'll take us to the sideboard method help part of the help file. 
Okay. If you're if you're on the tangent one span tab, and you click the help help button, that'll take you to the single span tangent method. Okay. So that's context sensitive help. It takes you to the help to do with the thing you're looking at. Okay. Um, same on the settings screen here. Um, if you're on the uh, inspector details tab and you click the, the help, it'll take you to the inspector details part of the help file. Okay. So that little just look out for that little icon there. And if you're stuck on anything to do with that tab or that screen, click that and it will take you straight to the help for that, for that option. Okay, or for that area. Uh, same for the autolite settings, it's, it's everywhere. Okay, the, the autolite settings. Uh, on project details, it'll take you straight to project details. If you're on uh, you know, uh, cable sag details, it'll, it'll take you straight to the setup uh, part of the help file for cable data. Okay, so very useful. Um, so um, please make use of that context sensitive help and the help file. Okay, um, so very useful. Okay, um, the next thing I'd like to talk about is the setup button. Okay, so the setup button, um, if we click that, then there's a whole bunch of tabs there and um, you, can, you can enter details depending on what you want to do. Okay, so in the inspector details, if you've got an inspector, um, the only field that's mandatory is the surname. So if you want to enter an inspector, you must at least enter a surname. If you don't want to enter an inspector at all, just leave it blank. Okay, and same for cables. So if you want to enter cable details, for example, you've got particular cables that you're sagging, um, then you'd enter those details in there. Okay, the structure details, uh, we'll come back to that, that's, that's a complex one. Uh, if you're using a certain sort of theodolite, um, zenith altitude or nadir, um, please make sure you select the right one in there. I've had a lot of emails over the years from people saying, saying it's given me the reverse of the data I was expecting or the reverse of the results I was expecting. Uh, that's because people have always got the wrong theodolite chosen. Okay, so make sure you choose the right theodolite. Um, the project details, um, here you can just enter details about the project. For example, you might be saying that it's based in the Rocky Mountains and the contract is a certain person and the contact name for the project is whatever. Okay. Um, so just enter details about the project. Um, as well as program settings, um, you can specify the order of the reports. So the, the order could be in uh, the order the spans are entered by the user, or the, the report is sorted by near structure. Okay, it just depends on the sorting order you want. Um, if you want the settings to be remembered when you move to a new span or new SAG, um, you could uh, uncheck that. Uh, if that's checked, then the settings are reset. So in other words, you get blank fields when you move to a new SPAN. SAG or SPAN. Okay, so you can control how the program works. Uh, you can have units of measure, so you can have it say you're working in metric or imperial. Uh, I'm used to metric, so I'll stick with metric for these demonstrations. But if you're working in imperial, feet, inches, and so on, then just check, check that setting there, and you'll be working in that from now on. Okay, and you'll notice as well uh, that all the details change throughout the program. So, uh, for example, when you when you set selected in, uh, imperial, um, That'll change to pounds per mile and inches instead of kilograms per kilometre and uh, metres. Okay, so all, all the little units change throughout the whole program. Okay, let's go back to that screen again because I need to work in metric. And uh, you can also specify the, the, the look of the tabs in the program as well, so flat tabs or button tabs. See how the tabs are changing at the top of the screen there? I'll just stick with standard tabs. Okay, so there's quite a few, quite a few things you can change in there. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about some more to do with settings at the moment. Okay, so uh, we'll go back to this, we'll start with the SAG span tab. Okay, and you'll see down here there's uh, inspectors blank. Okay, you might think, well, like, I can't type anything there. Uh, that's because these sorts of settings are um, controlled from the setup, the setup screen. Okay, and also you'll see down here the theodolite settings top uh, tells you that as well. So that's our theodolite setting. We're looking at a, a zenith uh, theodolite. Go back to settings and change the field light to altitude, then that'll change to altitude. Okay, so it's a good little visual clue that to make sure you're on the right uh, field light. Okay, because it's so easy to uh, make uh, to uh, be using the wrong one. Okay, um, also we'll look at how you set up the inspectors. Um, but before we do that, let's just talk about that. There's a little button down the bottom here, add basic settings. Now I added that when I was testing the program because I was sick of having to go and enter all the, the details again to do some testing. Okay, so this little button here is just basically to let you have a quick try of the program. It's, it says just, just throw basic settings in the settings for now, just so I can play with the main screen. 
okay so when you're doing a real a real life project you wouldn't you wouldn't press that button okay um, you'd, you'd enter the settings properly okay this is a little button here that I've left in from my testing days just to set up some basic settings just so you can go back into the main screen and have a play okay so let's press that and see what we get and it'll tell you that basic settings have been uh, added there um, okay so uh, if we look at the thought the, um, the there's, there's no basic settings there for inspector the cable details is just one cable I haven't put any construction details in no straining it's it's one kilogram per kilometer so it's a very light cable <laughs> a very light cable and I haven't put the diameter in at all um, structure details there's just one structure uh, one position on that structure and and one cable okay um, field light settings is, is altitude it hasn't changed from before when I changed it uh, no project details and everything on there is pretty well stayed the same okay so that add basic basic settings details just gives you enough so you can do some work in the main part of the program okay um, and if you look here you can actually see there's a, a, a structure and a position and a cable set up now okay so if you were trialing the program which is something I encourage everybody to do before they buy it I encourage it most strongly um, then you'd probably press that uh, add basic details there just so you can have a play with the program okay but like I said earlier uh, when you when you want to do a real life project with a program don't press that okay it'll it'll create some settings that you can't get rid of or find it hard to get rid of okay so that's the add basic details setting okay so uh, because we're gonna I want to sort of simulate that we're gonna do this as a bit of a real project in a, in a, in a way um, I want to I want to click the reset button and I'll just reset what we've just done okay and when you pop, click the reset button you've got three options you can cancel which does nothing or you can choose yes and that deletes all sag span and cable sa cable sag data but it leaves all your settings intact or else you can click the yes to all and that deletes everything so your sag span data your cable sag data and all your setup information I'm gonna click that one okay so we're starting here with a completely clean slate okay let's click the setup button again and uh, we'll put an inspector in And you can put oh yeah, put the surname if you want, <laughs> and then Mike, and then employer. Uh, if I want to put one, if I want to put my email address in there as well, I could as well. Uh, if I want to put my work phone number in there, I could put whatever I like. Uh, nine to five. Uh, it's all free format, so you can type whatever you like. It's not going to force you to put a certain format. Uh, I could put my that's my work number nine to five and um, between 6 and 10 because I'm a late worker there could be a different number there so just enter whatever you like okay same with mobile and phone if you've got a satellite phone as well you can enter that okay so and again you can um, you can put brackets around it and do it do it do whatever you like um, you can put little notes to yourself inside inside brackets it's not going to validate any of that the only field that's necessary or mandatory uh, is the surname and you can enter whatever you like for any of the other fields. It's not, it's not even going to check it's a valid surname, a, a valid email. Okay. If you've, got, if you've got multiple emails, just put them all in there. <laughs> Com not add or whatever. Okay. So um, just enter whatever you like. They're all free format fields. Okay. Uh, and then if you want to, uh, if, if you try and move off that tab now, um, it'll say, do you want to save? inspector details and if you say no it won't save it if you say yes it will save it okay so we're on the cable tab now because that's what I clicked on if you go back to the inspector tab you'll see all my details are still there if you want to enter more inspectors um, it might be a Mr. Fish Camden Fish um, you'll say it's saying inspector 2 of 1 because we haven't actually saved that inspector yet okay so how do you save the inspector well you try and move to another uh, inspector or you click on one of the tabs or you click the OK button and the program will prompt you to save the inspector okay let's do that um, so we'll try and move back to the first inspector and it will say do you want to save the inspector so if we say yes then we'll have two inspectors okay so you see O'Malley's inspector one and Mr Fish is, is inspector number two if we're going to add a third inspector we can just click the new button there and uh, Mr Crab <laughs> Cassius Crab, 
and he works for Crabtastic. Okay, and so on. You can just fill in details. If we try and move to a new inspector or a different if a different tab of the settings, or click the OK button, we'll be prompted if we want to save that new inspector. Okay, and now they'll, they'll click yes. Okay, so that's how the program works. For a lot of the settings, it works just that way. So you enter some details, and if you try and move to another another table or another inspector or another whatever, or if you click the OK button or try and change to another tab, it'll prompt you if you want to save it. Okay, so it won't let you go to a new tab without saving the existing details in the old tab. Okay, so the program works a lot that way throughout throughout everything, even back on the main screen. Okay, uh, if you want to enter some cable details, uh, we could say it's uh, copper copper conductor and its construction uh, uh, stranding is twisted. Or whatever you want to write, these are just free format fields again. The only ones that are mandatory is the code name and the mass. Okay, and it might be 10, 10 kilograms a kilometer, so again, a very light cable, and it might be uh, five millimeters in diameter. Okay, um, again, if we try and move to another tab, for example, back to the inspector tab, we'll be prompted if we want to save it. If we try and if we click that button there, we'll be prompted if we want to save it. If we click the OK button, we'll be prompted if we want to save it. Okay, so let's let's move to another cable, and I'll say yes. Okay, let's enter another one, and I'll enter um, zinc aluminium, and it's got a mass of fifteen kilograms a kilometer. And I don't want, I don't want to enter any other details at the moment. Okay, if I click the OK button, it'll prompt me, do you want to save it? And I'll say yes. Okay, just to prove that it has saved, let's go back to the setup. Cable details, there's cable one, the copper, copper conductor, and the zinc alum. Okay, and at any time you can change these details. So I could type in there that it's uh, uh, heat twisted or something. Okay, and uh, if I try and leave it, it'll say, do you want to preserve those details? And I'll go, yes. Okay, so back to copper, back to zinc alum, there's heat twisted, we just entered. Okay, so you can change details at any time and just click the OK button or another tab or back and forwards through the items. And you'll be prompted to save it. If we uh, entered heat twisted there and said one two three four, and clicked OK and said no, and then went back to our setup tab, the one two three four is not saved. Okay, so I said no to the preservation. Okay, so if you want to preserve it, click yes. If you don't want to preserve it, click no. Uh, structure details. We'll come back to that. That's the most complex part. Field light settings we've already talked about. Project details. There you can enter just enter details, whatever you like. Um, it's the Rocky Mountains. The hydro, the hydro plant to the boulder, city of, city of Boulder. Uh, the contractor is Mr. Uh, Lobster. I've got uh, nautical stuff in my mind. Uh, the contract number, if you want to enter that. And uh, contact phone number for the contractor. You can enter that as well. And the start date. Just enter details that you want. Okay. It's just all free format. Okay. Uh, and then the project settings, again, that's where we were before. So the order you, you want things to appear in a report, I quite like that order. Okay, so sort things by the new structure. Um, and when you move to a new span, SAG or SPAN, I, I'm happy if to, to be, be reset. If you want to preserve, uncheck that box there. And like I said, I like the metric and standard tabs. Okay, so you'll see there now that the description of the project's there. And the contractor and their contract and start date and anything else you wanted to enter. You could probably put the phone number and the start date up here or up there. You work it out wherever, wherever you want to put the stuff. Okay. Um, you'll see down here I've got some inspectors now, and there's Mr. Fish and Mr. Crab. Okay. Uh, Camden Crab and uh, Cassius Crab and uh, sorry, Camden Fish and uh, Mike O'Malley. Okay. So all those details we ended up there are now. Um, uh, available in the in the drop down there okay from the settings screen okay uh, let's go back to our table of contents so we've pretty well covered a lot of the setup stuff we've got still a few things to cover some of the more complicated stuff uh, but we can probably talk about the sag span tabs now okay so we'll go back to our table of contents and uh, we'll probably talk about some sag span work now 
that's the next thing to talk about. And then we'll go back and talk about the setup button again. Okay, so we'll do a bit of work in the main program, and then we'll go and talk about some settings and see how they affect the main program. Okay, so we're just trying to keep things in order. Okay, so um, here's your SAG span data stuff, and here you can enter um, your structure details, so the near structure and the far structure, and the span length. Okay, so um, tower one, tower two, and they might be 100 meters apart. Okay, I'm working in metrics in this, in this example. Okay, so if I click that button there, or if I click the setup button, or just about any of those other buttons, or I click um, uh, the report button or anything like that, or, or, the, or the cable sag details tab, I'll be prompted to save those details. Okay, I'll just do it by clicking that. Okay, preserve it, yes. Okay, so there's our first tab when we click on that button, and it's, we can enter another one if we want to. Uh, tower 200, tower. And you can even write yourself little notes as well, like it's on a steep area. And that might be a, a span of 175 meters. Okay, so if I click that button there, or that button, or that tab, or any of those other buttons at the top there, it'll prompt me to save the data. We'll do it by going back, okay. So now I've got two tabs, or two spans. Okay, there's the first one, there's the second one. Okay, uh, if I want to enter another one, I could go into the third one, and go tower 900, tower... 900B, you can just call them whatever makes sense to you, okay, and we might have a 110 meter span on that one. Okay, so, and we'll say yes. Okay, so now we've got three spans. There's our first one that we entered, there's our second one, and there's our third one. Okay, so you can use these buttons here to navigate between them, or you can click that to go to the first one, and click that to go to the last one, if that helps. Or if you want to jump to a particular span, because you might have lots, click the jump to button. Okay, and then you get, you'll get all the spans listed there, and you can just double click on that, and it'll take you straight to that, that span. Okay, so it's a good little navigate button there. Okay, back to span one. Okay, and, we, and you could have dozens of spans or hundreds of spans listed here. Okay, so take it to that one. Okay, if you want to delete any spans, you can use the delete span button there, and you'll be prompted, are you sure you want to delete? So it'll delete the span and all the cable sags associated with that span, which we haven't done yet, coming up to those soon. Okay, I'll click no there. Okay, so you can delete spans, you can navigate quickly to spans, a whole lot of options are provided there. Okay. Okay, so that's probably all we need to say about the sag spans tab. Now let's talk about the cable sag tab. Okay, so let's have a look at that and see what it looks like. And here's where you get your um, um, all your methods for sagging cables, and you can also choose whether you're sagging a cable or checking a cable. Okay, and some of the methods are all, nearly all the methods are available for sagging, but only some are available when you're checking. For example, the Clino methods. So Clino one and Clino two are only available when you're checking, but if you're sagging, they're not available. Okay, so it depends on whether you're sagging or checking, uh, which methods are available. Um, and also um, by checking those two, you'll see some inputs become outputs. When you click check, that becomes an out an input. So if you're sagging, that's an output. Okay, and you see it also changes up here as well. Okay. Okay. So um, inputs and outputs change depending on whether you're sagging or checking. Okay. Um, now we've entered some span details. Uh, for example, we've got uh, that, that, that group there, that group, that group. So we've got three spans there set up. Um, but none of these boxes here have got anything in at the moment. Okay. And that's where we need to go into the setup screen to set those up. Okay, so let's do that. And we'll go into the, the cable details we've got. We've got two cables there, the zinc aluminum and the copper. Okay. And we need to, need to set up the structure details there. Okay, so this is what we're up to now. Okay, so um, structure details. Um, what's the name you want for the, the, the structure type? So you, you might have different structure types, different uh, uh, tower types, whatever whatever um, objects you're sagging cables on. And really it's up to you guys to work out what you want here. Okay, again, this is just a free format field. So if you enter something meaningless like A, that's going to be there <laughs> for you to use. But if you enter something really nice like um, X, X tower type 2, uh, you know, that's not a real name, of course, but um, you can enter something really meaningful there that's meaningful meaningful for you. Okay, then we've got a, um, 
I mean, not that one there. You can always rename them later if you if you find you, you know that name wasn't so good. Um, so you could enter that if you wanted to. So that would uh, that would appear there. Cable positions. So this is where you set up the cable positions that can appear on your on your tower. So you might have top left, for example, and um, middle center. Okay, so I've got um, one structure type and two cable positions at the moment. Let's add another structure type. Um, I don't know, whatever's a good name for you. I've got an AB tower, hur hurricane rated. <laughs> I'm just making up names here. Okay, so then we've got two towers, or two structure types, and uh, two positions on each of those um, structures. And these cables here that we see are the ones we entered, actually entered here. Okay, so the copper and, and zinc are the ones that are appearing there. So that's where they come from. Okay, so now here's where you need to enter combinations. And these are valid combinations of the two, of the, of the, of the, of the ones. So for example, you might have uh, the X tower, that's got a middle position, and it can only have that conductor. Okay, so we click the Add button. Um, and the top, top, the top, uh, the top section, uh, can, can have a copper as well. Okay, so here you're setting up valid combinations of that structure with that cable, uh, position with that cable. Okay, so you might have a whole bunch of structures there, a whole bunch of, bunch of cable positions and a whole bunch of cables, but only some combinations are valid. Okay, so again, this depends on you guys and uh, the projects you're working on. Okay, so just set up whatever combinations you like. Um, you might have the AB tower, it's only got a, a middle and it can only take the zinc. Okay, and these are sorted by, by structure. If you want to sort by position, you can sort, use that, or sort by code name or, or, or cable type. Uh, click that button. I like sorting by structure, so just click the button here to sort. And uh, the add button there is to, to add in. At this stage of the program, there's no remove. Okay, uh, and the reason for that is um, I'm, I haven't got to that stage of implementing it. Okay, um, as we'll see but back in the main screen here, if we remove one of those combinations, it has an impact for our, our data back on the main screen. And it's just because nobody's requested it yet that I haven't, haven't added it. Okay, so uh, we'll click the OK button there. And we'll see straight away that now I've got struct types. We've got those two structures that we entered. We've got cable positions on those struct types. And we've got the conductors that, were, that are valid. Okay, now for the, for the X tower, we only had the copper conductor, so that's only why it's only coming up there. Uh, if we choose the AB tower, we only had the zinc loom that was valid. Okay, so the settings you set up in that, uh, um, in, that in that tab there, uh, the structure details tab, uh, that's what drives these drop downs here. Okay, so uh, if if you're thinking, oh damn, that other one should be there, just go back up to the setup screen there, add another combination. Okay, so your settings drive the main program. Okay. Um, let's do some sagging. Um, so we're sagging there. Um, um, we'll, we'll also talk about the reserve and the delete buttons. So they're coming up. Um, so let's let, let's do a calculate. That's probably the best place to start next. So we'll do a calculate, and uh, it'll validate the data that we've entered. So in other words, all the white boxes, it's validating data. And it will say that the upper temperature should be between 20 and 80, or minus 20 and 80. Okay, uh, and then it will place the, the cursor flashing in that box. Okay, so um, our temperature today is 15 degrees Celsius. The units of measure are always, are always there, 15C and, and, and the meters. Uh, we can click, we can click calculate again and just let the program do the work for us. The lower should be between minus 20 and 80. I'll enter a lower of 5. And we can just click, click clicking the calculate button. And it will tell us that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, just one at a time. Um, or else we could, um, you know, we could um, read the data from our instruments. <laughs> okay, so um, the sag there might be that, and the lower might be that. Okay, the creep allowance, and one of the one degree creep allowance. Um, the hours of pre sag that you hung the, hang the cable for, uh, it was hung for five hours, and the actual cable temperature when it was sagged was 14 degrees. Okay, so here I'm reading my instruments to get the data that I need to enter. So when we click the calculate button now, we should, shouldn't hopefully get too many errors, although we haven't entered these de details here yet. Okay, 
uh, if there's any errors you'll get an error message um, and it's saying that the vertical angle must be entered okay and it's in degrees dot minutes dot seconds format okay so dot degrees ddd dot mmm or dot mm dot ss okay so that's the, that's the format you enter it in um, so let's so we've got a we've got a tower one and tower two there that's the amount of sag we've got and um, so you're measuring with the with the height stick method you're measuring how far from tower one uh, the, the, the base of the sag is and you might say it's uh, 40 meters okay you've got 100 meter span so 40 meters and you've got the the, the bottom of the sag um, the distance there uh, from the from the undulating ground to the bottom of the sag might be 24 meters and the degrees from that hang point on the tower to the uh, to um, the, the the distance on the height stick uh, might be um, 15 degrees dot 22 minutes and 13 seconds using your theodolite and we could click the calculate button again okay if there's any problems with the program finds it'll give you an error message um, Oh, we've got that angle there as well to go to the far tower. And uh, okay, so I'm just making up data here. So we're going to get some wacky results, but you get the general idea. Okay, click the calculate button again, and it'll say uh, it's outside the expected range. Third light should, should, height should be a number between zero and three. Uh, are you sure you want to use the number outside this range? I'll say no in this in this case, and uh, I'll enter a value there of uh, two. Okay, so we had the third light way too high. Okay, and that's that's worked out the sag. So the the sag is actually ten meters. Um, so it's worked out that sag there. Okay, um, so that's we've done our first um, sag calculation. Okay, um, now we could click that preserve button there, and that would be saved. Okay, so those details would be, would be saved in our database. And that height stick method would be the one, if we click the report button now, that would be the one that's reported. If we say, mm, I'm not real happy with the height stick method, the ground's too undulating, or I couldn't get really good measurements of the angles, um, choose another method. Okay, for example, the shunt dynamometer. Uh, you know, we could be, uh, again, if you're not sure about the units, just click the calc button. Uh, Fulcum separation should be between 100 and 500, 5,000. So we'll enter a 120 and uh, calc the deflection should be a number between one and a thousand uh, we'll enter a, a value of two <laughs> okay i'm just making up the values again so we're going to get ridiculous answers but it's just to illustrate the point okay oh, wow so just making up answers we get the same sag 10 meters which is an incredible fluke okay uh, the numbers have a lot of tolerance obviously <laughs> you can enter quite a big range of numbers and it will still be a, a number around a 10 meter mark okay so um, you know, probably this being 120 meters didn't help. <laughs> okay, so if you're into real data, you get much more realistic values. Okay, now if I click, so I've, I've got values now on the height stick method and the shunt don, don, dynamometer method. Okay, if I click the preserve button now, okay, so that's the method that we're using for that, for that um, cable sag. Okay, so if I click the report button, the, the method that's going to be used in the report is the shunt dynamometer because that's when I click the preserve button on. Okay, so if I click report, um, uh, shunt dynamometer is the method. Okay, because that's when I click the preserve on. Okay, in other words, that's the last one I used uh, when I click the preserve button. Okay, um, if I want to do another another um, span or cable. Uh, I could I could choose another tower, and um, I've only got one conductor for that one, and one position or two positions. So I'll do the top left with the copper conductor. And again, you can just choose the methods you want to do. Uh, that's only available with with, with checking sag, uh, but you could do a tangent one span. Uh, that tower the tower's got a height of um, thirty four meters, and that angle there to the far tower. Um, Suspension point is um, 10 degrees, um, 23 minutes and 34 seconds. So just reading off your field light there. 
and uh, we can do a calc. And again, um, we're going to enter the, our, our temperatures. Okay, so um, we could say that there was only three hours of pre-sake with this one. There's a creep allowance of 12 degrees. The upper temperature is 18 degrees now because the weather's got warmer and uh, we've got a, a 12 meter there. And the lower temperature is 13 degrees, so we're dealing with quite warm weather because uh, this is all Celsius and um, 11. And the actual cable temperature when it was sagged was 17.5. Okay, so we'd enter data like that, click the help button, and it will work out the, spat, the sag. And the sag in this case is 14.3 uh, meters. Okay, so. Um, and, and, the, and the, that's. Okay, so um, that's basically sagging. Okay, so now we've got some spans and we've got some sags. If I went and entered some data for tangent 2 span or sideboard, I could, I could do all of those methods there, but it's the one you do the preserve on. That's the one that's reported and, and uh, the default one when you go back to those details again. Okay, so if we click the report button there, we should have two, two there. Okay, and there's the sags and spans for each one. I've entered quite some long fields here, so it's, it's mucked up our uh, uh, the, the, the tabbing on the report a little bit, because I've entered some crazy crazy long values, but that's, great. that's okay. Okay, so we've got the sags and the spans there, and the methods, shunt dynamometer, and the tangent line span. Now the default methods, or the methods that were selected when the preserve button was clicked. Okay, and you've got the date and report, and that's where our description of the project comes in. And, um, and we've got two other towers there that haven't had any spans or cable sags done for them. Um, so they've just got no, no data there in the other columns. Okay, it's just listing all the towers there um, and all the combinations of cable sags for each one, if there are any. If not, it just lists blank for the towers. Okay, so that report there, you can print it, uh, you can copy it to the clipboard, or you just click the OK button. Okay, so you've got those three options there. Um, some people have um, just they might want extra reports. And uh, when people ask me for new reports, I say, well, send me a, just a rough outline of what you want the report to look at, look like. For example, do me a, 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 a template in Word, and I'll, uh, you know, or a mock-up in Word, and email that to me, and I'll, I'll give you a new report. Okay, so I'll do the report as close as I can to your template. Um, at this stage, no one's asked for any new reports, so this report must be uh, pretty reasonable for starters, I suppose. Okay, so uh, when you're checking, um, you're checking existing SAGs. Okay, so here you'd enter the, the inputs change, so you'd enter that detail there and uh, click, the, click the calculate button and, uh, uh, and it, it would work out the, uh, the, the that detail, that, that box there and that box there, for example. Okay, um, let's go back to our table of contents. So we've done the, oh, the delete, there's a delete button there. Uh, if you want to delete, us, delete that particular cable sag, uh, details, just click the delete button and uh, it's, it's saying in this case, are you sure you want to delete those, that? And you can say yes or no, whatever you want. I'll go no in this case. Okay. Okay, so you can delete those, you can preserve them. Same with sags and spans, you can delete a sag or a span. And uh, if you delete a, sags, a sag and there's spans, cable sags reported for that span, it'll delete all those as well. That's what it tells you here. Delete all cable sags. I'll go no. Okay, so. Uh, that's basically how you use a program. Okay, so in a setup screen, um, you just enter details and the ones with asterisks are the mandatory ones. Um, and if you click that button there or that button or that button, it'll prompt you to save the new details. Okay, uh, which you can do or not do depending on what you want to do. It's up to you. And and here uh, in, the, in the SAG span stuff, just enter details there and you can uh, navigate between the spans. Um, and uh, if you click any of the buttons here or any of those other navigation buttons and you've changed something, it'll prompt you if you want to save it, which you can save if you want to. And in here, in the cable sag tab, um, you can choose your methods, enter data, uh, until you find one that really works well for you, that you're happy with the results, and that's when you click the preserve button. Okay, and that method then becomes a selected one for that cable sag. Okay, and that's basically how you use the program. Um, okay. Okay, so the video is getting quite long already, so we'll uh, we'll draw this one to a close very soon. We'll just cover a few more little features as well. 
Okay, so we've basically done a little bit of checking and sagging. Uh, we'll do the save button. So let's talk about the save button. So here I've entered a whole bunch of data, um, settings, sags, and spans. Um, so we can save that to disk, and it'll say, do you want to preserve? And I'll go, yes. Okay, and um, here you can type a name you want. So this is the Rocky Mountains. Um, 2012, February, 2nd of February. Okay, or however you want to, however you want to, uh, any valid file name is good there. Okay, so I could save that. Okay, that's saved. If I click the open button now, there's our, there's our project saved there. Okay, um, that's the save button. Um, so give each, give all your data of meaningful names, give all your files meaningful names, and it just makes it easy to find it later. Uh, we've covered the calc button already. The report button we've had a look at, it just reports what you've entered so far. So all the, all the, all the spans and all the, all the cable sags for those spans. And there's one other thing on the list, the exit button. Okay, and the exit button, just click that when you want to uh, exit. Now, if there's anything that's not saved, on the, for example, in here or in here, it'll prompt you, do you want to save it? Okay. And, um, so you can never lose data without without uh, cancelling the cancelling the save or cancelling this whatever. Okay, so uh, for example, let's let's make a change here. Uh, we'll we'll add a new tower, and I'll click exit, um, and it says you want to save data before exiting. So you can say yes, no, or cancel. And if you click no, it means you don't want to save it. So it just goes ahead with the exit without without saving that data. Okay. Um, and that's basically it for this uh, for this video. So I hope that was useful. And um, um, like I say, have a look at the help file, read that getting started guide, and uh, read about the methods in the help file, and then just just have a play with the program before you do any real projects with it, before you buy it. <laughs> okay, especially have a good play with the program. That's why there's a trial version uh, on the internet, so you can have a really good play with it. Make sure it does exactly what you want before you buy it. Okay, but certainly before you do any real life projects with it, uh, spend a few hours getting comfortable with this, with the pro program. So, um, you know, just make up some settings, um, you know, um, make up make up some cable details, make up some structures, and uh, and then um, make up some spans, and um, make up some cable sags, and just enter some data and have a play with the program. Generate a few reports. Uh, and make sure you do that and have a good play with the program before you go out in the field and try and use it, okay? Um, because uh, then you need to really get it, get moving and uh, get some sag sagging done. Okay, so I hope the video was useful. And um, so it's still prompting me about that. Um, so it's telling me the right structure cannot be. And I'll go no. Uh, do I want to accept the number outside that range? Mm -hmm. And do I want to save it? No, I just want the three spans. Okay, so I didn't save that one. So I've just got the three I started with. <clears throat> okay, and I um, hope that was useful. Okay, so read the help, have a good play with the program, and uh, and watch the, the follow on video, and uh, have a good play with the program again, and then you should be ready to go out into the field and start doing some sagging and some spanning. Okay. Thank you.